What's going on guys? Gabe with the video Dork. Now before we start this video, I want to give a shout out to the Fang and Flower. I'll include a link to their Instagram. Check it out. But they created some amazing AMC endgame art and apparently I'm Ant-Man and I'm okay with being Ant-Man. You know why? Because I could get very microscopic, walk into a Chick-fil-A on Sunday and make my own fried chicken. But let's look at the chart here and we want to zero in on this date after hours on May 17th. We saw the price pop up to 1580. We all got really excited and then it slowly dropped. We have seen a massive sell off through the remainder of the week to bring us at 1215. This was all because of Wanda Group trimming their position in AMC and this does not have anything to do with Wanda Group having a change in conviction in AMC. It has a lot to do with foreign policy and China wanting their Chinese businesses to invest in the local economy. That's really that, but it actually points something out that's really, really interesting. The hedge funds really don't have as much power as we assumed. The price drop was because Wanda trimming their positions. Currently, they have 10,000 shares, which is as minuscule as Ant-Man would be at a very microscopic level. Let's talk about the 493 million shares outstanding. And then we sort of kind of extract an average number that we hold as investors. Now, there's a ton of ways to skin a cat, but I want to go through data that standard, standard data, right? Data that we have most recently. So we are going to go ahead and check out some data that we collected from Investopedia. Contributions to a 401k in the age group of 20 to 29 is about 7%. Contributions to a 401k in the age bracket of 30 to 39 is about 8%. So these are, are relatively close, right? And you could see as we move up in the age bracket, we see the contribution getting higher and higher as you get older and older, but we also see the average balance getting higher and higher. Okay, enough of that. Now let's assume based on the average household income by age group, and you guys see this here, the median income in the US dollars, and this is by household. So at 15 to 24, the median income is 47,000. From 25 to 34, we see 70,000. From 35 to 44, we see about 88,000. And from 45 to 54, we see 92,000. Now let's assume that household contribution to the cause to the AMC movement, to the AMC endgame, is a paltry 5%. Well, I went ahead and did some math and I took the median income from these different age groups and I divided it by two. Why did I divide it by two? We're only about halfway through the year. You're following me here? Now, what we did was is we took the average of every integer or whole number price point from $2 to $20, assuming that that's when most of us jumped into AMC. With that, we have an average share price of $11. Now, there are a lot of you that have lower averages. God bless you. I hope you have a lot of shares. But this is just really to open your eyes with some very non-hype numbers. If we assume that these households contribute 5% to the cause, based on the income that they have earned so far this year, we have some really interesting numbers and don't mind my notepad here, but uh, Applejacks highlight this notepad. This is a little prehistoric, right? But I'm an ape. At 15 to 24 with a household income of 47,000, we cut that in half, we have 23,000. A 5% contribution of their income to AMC would mean that they have $1,198.35 invested in AMC. With the average price of $11 a share, they hold 108 shares, almost 109 shares. And as we apply that formula to the different age groups of 25 to 34, we see that age group theoretically, and again, just based on very simple numbers, no hype here, we have 159 shares. The next age group, 35 to 44, 201 shares. And finally, the age group, 45 to 54, 209 shares. I do not mean to purposely omit individuals or households uh, older than 54. 
I just feel like this movement is really, really targeting our age group. However, if you are holding AMC, God bless you. When we take all of these averages based on shareholdings and based on a 5% contribution to AMC, we have an average of 170 shares. Not bad, right? Now, when you times that by 3.2 million investors, now that is the last rec rec record of investors of 3.2 million. That number should be a hell of a lot higher, but again, we're keeping this simple. That means we hold collectively 544 million shares. I mean, it's mind numbing to think about it because shares outstanding, total shares outstanding, is 493 million. Now, you're gonna have some YouTubers uh, suggest that there's 450 million shares outstanding, but if we look at Bloomberg, we will see that that number is now adjusted for the 43 million share dilution that happened recently. Now, where am I going with this? I'm basically saying, just hold. These are very, very modest numbers, and we just hold. That's all we have to do, and it's end game. Now we can compound or exacerbate the situation by including FTDs, synthetic shares, naked shorts, all that great stuff. We can then add in maybe the global number of investors because Adam Aaron did say that the 3.2 million on record were just Canada and US alone. This has become a global movement. So let's just add another 800,000 to a million investors to the fold. And we now have a bigger problem. With that being said, I want to look at what's happening to Bitcoin and Bitcoin's current price. So we see Bitcoin flirting at $32,000 a share. That was a drop, a significant drop, damn near 50% from a high of about $63,000 a share a few weeks ago. It seems to me that they are massively, massively in trouble. When I say they are, I'm referring to hedgies. They are in massive trouble. Therefore, they are selling their stakes in Bitcoin to cover themselves. So with all that being said, guys, you know, there was, there was a lot of FUD last week. There was a lot of uncertainty last week. Uh, you know, people were wondering what the hell is going on. Guys, stop wondering. The math says we won. The math says we own the whole entire company, not just the float. We own the entire company. And this isn't accounting for institutions that have a holding of AMC as well. This is mind numbing and mind boggling. And I'm looking forward to the share recount. And I'm really hoping that uh, Adam Aaron goes ahead and just pulls pulls the rug from under the hedges and says, hey, you know, we're going to do a share count this week. <laughs> that would be fun. That would definitely catalyze the squeeze. So I hope these numbers make sense to you. And guys, we have a feature pack week coming up a couple of things we will be doing a video on how to navigate ape crayons and i understand there were some recommendations to have a live chat where you guys can seamlessly chat within a group so we're currently working on that we're also working on an android app and an ios app which would certainly help with the navigation so we're growing with you guys but we are committed to that community also we will be doing live streams this week and remember how i said no super chats and no super stickers right we don't want the money we want you investing in amc we want you investing in the future however we do have a toll-free 1-800 number that will pop up on our live stream. And what I want you guys to do in the same way that I'm doing interviews with other YouTubers who have a story and how they got involved in AMC, I really want to hear from people like yourself. So you'll be able to call on in and you'll be live with us and we get to shoot the shit back and forth. You get to share your story, ask some questions, but that's my commitment to the community. I want everybody to be as involved with this movement as possible. I know there's a little uh, disengagement because we're on the other side of the camera and we're YouTubers and you know, you guys are shareholders, but I would like to think of us as one big family. Anyways, this is Gabe with Babu Dork. I am signing out.
Peace.